500 million Harry Potter books have been sold worldwide. Total gross revenue from the books is $7.7 billion. There are tons of variations of Harry Potter toys. There's a Harry Potter section at Disney with rides and merch you can take home with you. Some of the merchandise teaches you how to cast a spell, just like the movies and books. If you're a Christian, a Harry Potter fan, and watching this right now, please be sure and watch this video all the way to the end, and then decide if Harry Potter is something that should be a part of your life. We're going to read what the Bible says about witchcraft, and what you find out might change your mind. We are very familiar with the theme of a good guy and a bad guy. Almost every book that you read and every movie that you have ever watched has a good guy and a bad guy, a hero and a villain. In the movie It's a Wonderful Life, you have George Bailey and Mr. Potter. In the movie Gladiator, the hero is Maximus and the villain is Commodus. These themes take after a theme of good versus bad that originates in the Holy Scriptures. In the Bible, we read about good and evil. It's pretty clear what is good and what is bad, and we are taught in the Bible to differentiate between the two. The players in this cosmic conflict are God and Satan. Not much is taught about Satan these days. Many people just think of a little red guy on your shoulder with a pitchfork and horns trying to tempt us to do the wrong thing. However, the Bible describes something much more sinister. In fact, it says that the enemy of God is your enemy. 1 Peter 5, 8 says, Be sober-minded, be watchful, your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. We are told to watch out, to be sober-minded, and be careful not to even mistakenly follow Satan. The biblical narrative is a challenge to human beings to follow God and not follow Satan. Satan ultimately wants everyone to follow him. He even tries to get Jesus to acknowledge his self-proclaimed supremacy when he tempted him in the Bible. So part of our reason to be careful is that unwittingly we might end up following something devilish without meaning to. 1 John 3, 8 says, Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus, the Son of God, came to destroy the works of the devil, works that have deceived people for thousands of years. Satan's ploy is to make bad things look good. It is the ultimate deception that gets people to think they are involved with something good when actually they are following something satanic. The word satanic sounds pretty hardcore. But that is exactly what happens when someone follows something that Satan started to fool people into thinking it's good when it's actually against God. Now, let's take a look at a few verses in the Bible that I bet weren't memory verses of yours when you were a kid. They are pretty serious, but absolutely necessary for us to understand. Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 12. When you enter the land, the Lord your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Because of these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. No wonder God warned the Israelites about following the ways of the people in the land where they were going. These people would burn their children alive as an act of worship to their gods. Along with this practice, they are given a list of other things these people do that God says are detestable to Him. That means God hates these things, which ultimately means His adversary is the one using these things to draw them away from God. He said that people that sacrificed their children were not to be among God's people. Okay, we can probably all agree that killing your children by burning them alive is a horrendous thing to do. No question at all. But look at what is closely associated with these things and is mentioned in the very same sentence. People that practice sorcery, interpret omens, engage in witchcraft, or cast spells, or who is a medium or spiritist, or who consults the dead. 
Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Now that is a pretty strong statement. Participating in these things is such a rejection of God and an acceptance of his enemy that he says they are detestable. I've heard it said that Harry Potter movies are harmless and not a big deal. However, we can't read a Bible verse like this and take that comment seriously. It is a big deal for God. It also associates witchcraft and sorcery with talking to dead people. Remember that the Bible says Satan can make himself look like an angel of light, and if he can do that, he can make himself look like a dead relative or anyone who has passed away. You've probably heard of a seance where people get together and their dead relatives are called back and they talk to them. Maybe you've played with a Ouija board and had some sort of supernatural things happen. These are all part of the same category of detestable things mentioned in the Bible that are directly associated with Satan. God is clear. These things are against him. However, these books and movies on witchcraft have been heralded as one of the most influential series on young adults ever. In 73 languages, you can read about the very things mentioned in the Bible as evil. A September 23, 2016 CNN article says, There appears to be no end to the Harry Potter magic. Fans can now tap into that magic thanks to the official Patronus experience launched in Pottermore.com. Potter devotees know that a Patronus charm calls up a person's spirit guide, a spell first introduced in the third Harry Potter book, which became intrinsic to the series. The Patronus charm is a defensive spell which produces an ethereal guardian protector taking the form of an animal. A pure, protective, magical concentration of happiness and hope, the Patronus is the only spell effective against Dementors, terrifying creatures which prey on human happiness. For any student of the Bible, it is completely obvious that this is demonic. You might say, well, Jamie, you just quoted that one verse. Maybe there's some context you are missing. Here's a few more. Leviticus 19.31 says, Do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out, and so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Exodus 22.18 says, You shall not permit a sorceress to live. Not my words, this was the rule for Israel given by God. Revelation 21.8 says, But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for the murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Those that practice sorcery will not be in heaven. That's a strong biblical warning and a calling to God's people to give that stuff up and follow him. Leviticus 20 verse 6 says, If a person turns to mediums and necromancers, whoring after them, I will set my face against that person and will cut him off from amongst his people. You didn't think you'd hear the word whore in this video, but that is the exact word God uses for those that deal with these dark practices. Mediums and speaking to the dead, which is what necromancy means, these are mentioned alongside of witchcraft and sorcery all throughout the Bible. The term whoring simply means that those who practice these things have been unfaithful to God. We see the same parallel in Revelation. God's call for us is to be faithful to Him, and biblically it is clear that participating in anything that even resembles witchcraft, spiritism, sorcery, or speaking to the dead makes us an enemy of God, even if we don't realize it. That sounds harsh, but I don't see any other interpretation of that when I read my Bible. So here's a biblical suggestion for what to do with your Harry Potter books, and it comes from Acts chapter 19, verse 19. And a number of those who had practiced magic arts brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. As Christians, it should be completely obvious who we are following. Jesus. The only inspiration we need is from God, for sure not his enemy. Philippians 4.8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Colossians 2.6 and 7 says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as your Lord, continue to live your lives in him rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. 
This is God's guidance for you today. Focus on things that are positive and good according to the Bible. Follow what is good in God's eyes and avoid what he says is evil. There is no question at all that witchcraft and sorcery are the playground of the enemy of God. Let's make sure that we are fully devoted to following the God who created us, who loves us, who died on the cross to save us, and has a place prepared for us in heaven. I'm Jamie Houghton with 832.